the Lord is going to give everyone today in Jesus' name. Father, we come because we know you are here. We come because you are going to transform our lives. We come because great, wonderful, mighty things you are going to do. Confirm your mighty touch, divine touch in every life even this morning, in Jesus' name. Amen. Glorify yourself in every life. In Jesus' name, we pray. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. As the Lord has brought us here, we know He wants to touch every life. He wants to turn around every life. Yesterday, as we began, we started with 2 Timothy chapter 1, and we studied, and the major thing was, I am appointed. Now today, as we come, we're going to major on, I am made. Number one, yesterday, I am appointed. Today, I am made. I am made a minister. I am made whatever the Lord has planned. You notice in the life of Paul the Apostle, you notice in his ministry, there was a mighty change. Number one, it was an injurious sinner. He became an incredible saint. He didn't remain a sinner. Saved, converted, turned around, changed. He became an incredible saint. From sinner to saint. When he touches you, when he turns around your life, you will not remain a sinner. I will not remain a sinner. Now, Jesus said, ye are the salt of the earth. And Paul, the apostle, is saying, he became salt. The salt that will wipe away, that will decrease, that will take away the corruption in society. As you come to the Lord, and the Lord touches your life, and the Lord turns your life around, you become salt, you're no more as corrupt as you were. Grace comes. Strength comes. And the touch of heaven comes upon your life. And you become the salt of your community. A change that so happens that that change will influence everyone around you. If you still remain a sinner like you were, then grace has not done anything. Number one, a saint. Number two, salt. Number three, he became an incredible soul winner. The Lord made him like that. He didn't remain as he was before. A mighty, incredible soul winner. And the reason we come here is so that the same thing that the impartial God did for Saul, who became Paul, that same great thing he will do in your life. Let me hear your amen. amen. When we say you'll never be the same again, it means you will not be a sinner. You'll not remain a sinner. You become an incredible sage, you become salt, and you become an incredible soul winner. Now, Paul the Apostle, as he came to the Lord, and the Lord turned this life around, he was weak before, but now he became the strong one, and the Lord will make you strong. And the thing that defeated you before, that turned your back to the wall, and that made you crying in the past, have blown it again, 
I've sinned again. I've done evil again. You become the strong one. It'll make you strong. And then Paul, the apostle, he was writing to Timothy. He said, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. That man that became a sage, that became a soul winner, that became soldier, he became a soldier. A soldier of the Lord. Militant for the Lord. Aggressive and triumphant in the ministry the Lord has called him to. You'll be a soldier. A soldier of the cross. A soldier of Christ. A soldier that will not turn for anything. And the enemy will not be able to defeat you anymore. I am a sage. Say it for yourself. I am no more a sinner. I am a sage. I am a soul winner. I am salt. And I am a soldier of Jesus Christ. Let me hear you. What you confess is what you possess. And then he became an incredible servant of God. And every epistle that he wrote, he write to the people, Paul is servant of God by the will of God. You are no more serving the flesh. You are no more serving Satan. You are no more serving in the corruption of the world. You become a servant of the holy God in heaven. And the nature of the Lord is transferred into your life. It will be so. That our coming to the presence of God, living in the presence of God, His strength will so come to us, His power will so come to us, that the weakness of the past, everything will vanish away. And then finally, He became a shepherd. He had a shepherd heart. He had a pastoral heart, and he became a shepherd, incredible shepherd. And he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. It doesn't mean I am what I am. I'm a sinner by the grace of God. No, you are not a sinner by the grace of God. You, cannot, you can be a sinner, but it's not by the grace of God. The grace of God does not make us sinners. The grace of God does not make us weak. The grace of God does not make, his, make us corrupt. The grace of God comes into your life and it changes you from being a sinner to a sage. What's your name? I said, what's your name? As we're called St. Paul, I call St. Joseph. Saint Josephine, Saint William, Saint Stephen, you become a saint in Jesus' name. Give me good, good amen. amen. Today, as we are coming to Second Timothy chapter 2, we're looking at chapter 2 from verse 1. Remember, yesterday I am appointed. Today, I am made. He'll make something good, something great, something gracious out of your life and your ministry in Jesus' name. Look at verse 1, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 2 and the things. That thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And then in verse 3, it says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Verse 4 tells us, No man. That warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. 
Verse 5, it says, And if a man striveth for the masteries, we're not striving for mediocrity. We're not aiming at mediocrity. We're not aiming to remain as we were in the past. If a man striveth for masteries, yet you see not crowd, except he strive lawfully. Then verse 6 says, The Ottoman man that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Verse 7 tells us, Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. The Lord give you understanding in all things. Verse 8, remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Verse 15, now study to show thyself approved unto God. Endeavor, make effort. Don't look back, look up, look forward, and get to the place you have never been. Take a decision, make a commitment, a dedication to the Lord that you'll be approved unto God. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Today, we're looking at the message, an approved minister with accredited models. The Lord gives us models that he has accredited, and he says, look at what they did, and look at how they did it. I gave them grace, it will give you grace. I said it will give you grace. Three things we're going to consider. Number one, the models for divine, divinely appointed ministers. The models, what we're looking at. We're not looking at the people that had failed, that were mediocre, that were not approved of God, we can find a lot of those people, but we're looking up to the people that God himself has said as models for us. The models for divinely appointed ministers. Number two, the making of divinely approved ministers. If you ever become anything, Anything great, anything successful, anything accredited, approved of God, it will have to be his making, the making of divinely approved ministers. Number three, the marks of divinely appreciated ministers. What are the marks? What are the characteristics? What are the things I should look for in my life? You know that the Lord himself that appointed has now approved and he appreciates the marks of my ministry, of your ministry. Let's look at them one by one. Point number one, the models of divinely appointed ministers. There are four models the Lord has given us here. Number one is the model of a teacher. Number two is the model of a soldier. Number three is the model of an athlete. Number four, the model of a farmer. Number one, the model of a diligent teacher. Number two, the model of a disciplined soldier. Number three, the model of a distinguished athlete. Number four, the model of a dedicated farmer. Look at them. Number one, the pursuit of diligent teachers. 
we look at teachers and we see their pursuit and the Lord calls us to the same style and the same model that we make ourselves like diligent teachers. Number two, yeah, the portrait of disciplined soldiers. We look at a soldier, the regular soldier, who are raised up to fight for the right of their community, of their territory, of their country. And the Lord has raised us up for the kingdom. And then we look at that portrait and we allow that portrait of the disciplined soldier to be replicated and reproduced in us. Number three is the persistence of a distinguished athlete. It's uh, from that time, old time, that the Olympics had been. And the Olympics remains today. And you see the people who are running and they want to win a medal. And they are distinguished because of their perseverance in preparing to be at least. And then number four, you are familiar with this. It is the performance of dedicated farmers. They're committed to feeding the nation, not just feeding themselves or feeding their families. They want to feed their community. They want to feed their nation. They want to feed people beyond their nation. And then the Lord gives us the portrait we ought to have. And he gives us the model we ought to have, the performance of dedicated farmers. Let's look at them quickly, one by one. Number one, the pursuit of diligent teachers. Look at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. You are saved by grace. You are changed by grace. You are transformed by grace. You are sustained by grace. You are energized by grace. You are empowered by grace. You are made strong by grace. Now, when you are strong, you are able to do what you are not able to do before. You are able to withstand what you are not able to withstand before. You are able to overcome the sins and the works of the flesh that overcame you in the past, when you are strong, now you are able to overcome. And so Paul, the apostle, by inspiration, told his son, Timothy, be strong. You can't remain weak and then help weak people. You can't remain sinful and help sinful people. You can't remain discouraged and then help discouraged people. If you're going to help others, if you're going to bring others out of the pit of weakness and out of the habit of sinfulness, you yourself must be so strong you have overcome and you can testify I overcame, and so I come to show you the way to overcome. Look at verse 2 now. Here was the pursuit that Timothy was to follow. And the things that thou hast heard of me. The things that thou hast heard of me. Timothy, since you came and you were listening to me, what have you heard? Paul, I've heard about repentance and about faith in Christ. The things you've heard of me. Paul said, what have you heard of me? I've heard that if any man be in Christ is a new creature, old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Have you heard any other thing? I've heard of salvation. That if you believe in your heart that Jesus died and he was raised from the dead, and then you accept him as your Savior, as your Lord, 
thou shalt be saved. What have you heard of me? Walk by faith and don't walk by sight. What have you heard of me? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet it is not I. The life I live now, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Now, you cannot sin by the grace of God. You cannot keep on telling lies by the grace of God. You cannot believe in a defeated life by the grace of God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live by the faith of the Son of God, I do that by the faith of him who loved me and gave himself for me the things that thou hast heard of me. Among many witnesses, the same, don't take away from it, the same, don't adulterate it, the same, don't modify it, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. That's the teacher. He wants you to be a teacher, a teacher of the word. Not a teacher of human opinion, not a teacher of tradition, a teacher of the word that we can experience and will give off a strong life, a matured life, a victorious life. Look at the next one, number two now. We're looking at the portrait of a disciplined soldier. Look at Second uh, Timothy chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 3. It says, Thou therefore endure hardness. If your backbone is weak, if your mind is weak, if your life is weak, if you're like a jellyfish, if you're like an amphibian, when it's tough on the land, you jump to the sea. When it's a storm in the sea, you come back to the land. If you are a person that has straw for your, back, for your backbone and you cannot stand, you cannot be steadfast, you cannot be solid, and you cannot be built upon the rock of ages, you will not be able to make it in the ministry. But the people who are able to stand and they remain steadfast, they are the people that have the discipline of a soldier. And so Paul, the apostle, said, Timothy, know the ministry you are called to, and know the power that supports you, and the possibility that can be in your life. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, a soldier is a changed, transformed person. He was a civilian. His life was flabby, weak. So and it was so so. It wasn't a real strong life. And then uh, he decided, I'm going to be a soldier. And the first thing they do there, they give him an air court. It may not be a kind of air court he likes because now they're trying to change his personality. And then they make him wake up at a time he normally would not, would not have got up from bed. And then they make him to eat at the times everybody else will eat, not at the time he wants to eat. And they regulate the diet and they regulate the lifestyle. They're working on his mind. It's not the hands. It's not the feet. It's not the bodily part of the soldier, it's the mind of the soldier. And then they teach him and they train him not to be careful, uh, not to be caring for himself alone, but to be aware that a soldier is only successful as he is with other soldiers 
united and they form a formidable front to withstand the enemy. Now, you bring it back to the Christian life and to the Christian ministry. That's what the Lord wants. He wants us not to be thinking of what I was and then I'm only saved by grace. I am still a sinner. Never. A change. A transformation. That's why it says in verse 4. Look at verse 4. It says, No man that worries entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, with the corruption of this life, with the lifestyle of everyone around, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. God has chosen you. I said God has chosen you. He didn't choose you to be a flabby, weak, fallen civilian. He has chosen you to be a soldier. Not just a soldier. He has chosen you to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. All the grace it takes. All the power it takes to make you a good soldier. The Lord will do it. He did it for Paul. He'll do it for you. He did it for Timothy. He'll do it for you. He will do it for every one of us in Jesus' name. And look at look at this. First Corinthians chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 25. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. Here is Paul the apostle saying, and every man that striveth for the mastery, for the mastery, for the mastery. Don't strive for mediocrity. Don't be satisfied with where you are. And don't say, I'm all right. You are not all right. Come up higher. It says, every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Temperate in all things. He has brought everything in his life under control now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown but we are incorruptible in verse 26 it says therefore i so run i don't just um, kind of walk in sluggishly because you understand he's been in the prison you understand they had beaten him a lot of times, you understand. He had suffered persecution. He said all the same with what has gone behind. And with the water that has gone under the bridge. Therefore, I so run, not as uncertainly. And so fight I like a good soldier, not as one beating the ear. In verse 27, it says, but... I keep my body under. He didn't say, all my life I've been weak. My body had been my master. My mouth had been my master. My fleshly desires had been my master. And what can I do? Uh, but now I'm saved by grace? No. He said, I'm saved. I'm converted. I'm transformed. And because of that, I... By that grace that has been given to me, I keep my body under and bring it into subjection. I do not allow the desires of the flesh to rule me and run me down and make me fall all the time saying I'm still a sinner. It says I bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means when I have prayed to others, I myself should be a castaway. Let's look at number three. Number three is the perseverance of distinguished athletes. They know how they should do their exercise regularly. They know how they should wake up at the right time. And they know how to moderate their diet so that they will not be taking in something that will be a heavy load on them. And it is that kind of distinguished life, that kind of looking at life and say, I can't touch that. I can't go there. If I do that, it will become an encumbrance. 
an entanglement upon my life and therefore I live like a distinguished athlete. The perseverance of distinguished athletes. Depending on the area of athletics that person is pursuing. It might be punching that bag as a boxer. It might be running if it is to run a short distance or is to run marathon all over the country and then he perseveres and perseveres. There are times that when the athlete is practicing, he would almost be out of breath. As if he's going to fade, as if he's going to fall and die, but because of the goal and because of what he's aiming at, he keeps on running, he keeps on running until the D-Day comes. But you know, he might practice for nine months for a game that is going to take place and a game that will be over within 10 minutes. Think about an athlete practicing, training for nine months, for one year, for a game that is going to be just 10 minutes. And that's what the Lord is calling us to. He says, look ahead and look at what the Lord is calling you for. And look at that athlete as a model. And don't give the Lord a kind of service that has no preparation. A kind of service that has no perseverance. A kind of service that has no training. It says you will persevere like a distinguished athlete. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 1. We're looking at verse 5. And if. 2 Timothy 1 5. It tells us, and when we strive for the mastery, then we strive for that mastery like an athlete that is telling that is going on to make us, chapter 2, verse 5, to make us like we ought to be. Perseverance, endurance. And staying under whatever pressure so that we will accomplish what the Lord has called us to accomplish. It will be done in your life in Jesus' name. And if a man strive for the masteries, yet he see not crowned, except he strive lawfully. We must know the rules of the game that God himself has said. For the athlete, spiritual athlete now. And then when we do that lawfully, we don't carry on ministry just by what we think, how we think, what's convenient for us, what's comfortable for us. We look at the law. We look at the word. We look at the order. We look at the demand of the Lord. And then we follow and the Lord will make you an accomplished, distinguished Christian minister in Jesus' name. Number four now. Number four is the performance of dedicated farmers. The performance of dedicated farmers. Have you seen the farmer? Of course you have. How they wake up in the morning. Have you seen the farmer? They go to the farm and then they look at the soil. They know the kind of crop that will grow on this soil. This one is for rice. That one is better for potato. That one is better for beans. That one for vegetable. That one for tomato. And they never miss it because they study. They study their ground. 
They study their seed. They match the siege of the ground. And that's what the Lord is expecting us to do. He sent us to go and preach the gospel. The gospel is the seed. The gospel is what we plant in the hearts of the people. And then uh, those who are not saved, he gives us the kind of message to preach to them. Those who are saved and they need to grow with the milk of the word. He gives us what we are going to tell them. And those who are training for the ministry and we give them uh, the bowls. He tells us everything we are to do. And we do that as farmers who are dedicated to raising up the crop for the feeding of the people look at verse 6 it says the husband man that means the farmer that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits you're talking about salvation you must be a partaker of the salvation yourself you talk about following peace and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. You must be a partaker yourself. You talk about the strength of a servant of God. You must be strong yourself. You talk about enduring temptation, overcoming temptation. You must be a partaker of the fruits yourself. The husband man that laboreth must be the first partaker of the fruits. The Lord will do it in your life. He'll accomplish it in your life. And he'll multiply the fruit of ministry in your life, in your ministry, in your church, in Jesus' name. Now in verse 7, it says, Consider what I say. Consider what I've said about the teacher. Consider what I've said about the soldier. Consider what I've said about the athlete. Consider what I've said about the farmer. And it says, consider what I say. Apply it to your life. Don't just hear the word and then run up, sit down, meditate, think through, and compare everything with your life. And the Lord give you understanding in all things the Lord give you understanding in all things confirmation in your life performance in your life you'll not remain at this level where you are now you will climb up you will go up you will grow up you will achieve more for the Lord in Jesus name now, number two. Number two is the making of divinely approved ministers. The making. The making. Now, all the people that have served the Lord successfully, creditably, they were made by the Lord. Think about anybody. Think about a person like Moses. He was made because he couldn't do that by himself. And think of Jeremiah. He said, I am a child. I cannot go and talk to the people. He was made the way the Lord made them. He will make you. And think about Ezekiel. I have made you a watchman unto the house of Israel. He was made. Think about Paul. I am made a minister. They were all made. And the same impartial God who made them what they were, he will make you what you ought to be. It's going to start today. It's been doing it before, but it's going to start a new level of making in your life today in Jesus' name. Now, when God makes, where does he start? How does he do it? What does he make us of? Look at this, number one. He makes the sinful free. He makes the sinful free. Neither do I condemn you, but go and see no more. Thou art made whole. 
but sin no more, lest a worse sin come on thee. Awake to righteousness and sin not. How does that happen? It's by the making of the Lord. Look at Romans chapter 6, verse 18. In Romans chapter 6, verse 18, being then made free from sin. It's this making. It will do it in your life. You became the servants of righteousness. Look at verse 22. In verse 22, it tells us, but now being made it's the one that will make you the man, the woman, the minister that you ought to be, the professional you ought to be, being now made free from sin and become servants to God. Ye you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Number two, the making of the sick. He makes the sick whole. If you are sick, if you are down, if you are anemic, if you are having so much pain, how can you do the work? And so, in making you a minister, it will make you whole. It will touch your body. And it will take away everything that will make you, that should have made you incapacitated, that you couldn't do the work of God. Look at Acts chapter 9. We're looking at verse 34. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh, that's the word, maketh, maketh thee whole. Arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. I come to tell you this morning, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Every sickness, every infirmity, all the weakness, all the diseases, everything pass away out of your body in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three, making the weak strong. Making the weak strong. Now, human beings are generally weak. The weak in this area, the weak in that area. And if you look at your life, you might say, between yourself and God, just by yourself, you're weak in this area, you're weak in this area, and in making a minister, he comes to make the weak strong. He'll make you strong. I said he'll make you strong. And every day, every day, the God who walked yesterday, the God of yesterday is the God of today. And the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. The God who made you strong yesterday and you overcame, that same God will make you strong today. And that same God will make you strong tomorrow. And as you live one day at a time, one event at a time and one activity at a time the strength of the lord will never fail in your life look at second corinthians chapter 12 reading from verse 9 and he said unto me my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made look at that made made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Verse 10. <coughs> in verse 10, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions. In distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, tell me, then am I strong. Never count on weakness. You want to do ministry, and you want to go where God has called you, and you say some kind of weakness. Don't count on that. Count 
on the grace of God. Count on the strength of the Lord. And count on the possibilities you have in the Lord. You'll be strong. Number four, making victims victorious. You were a victim before. And now you want to carry on ministry? Can I be a minister? An effective minister? A successful minister with this kind of background that I'm always a victim and you're always thinking about victim, victim and then you have the mindset of being a victim the Lord will turn you to a victor. You'll be brother Victor. You'll be Sister Victoria. Amen. Give a good amen. amen. Look at Judges chapter 5 and verse 13. Judges chapter 5, verse 13. Then he made, that's the word, is the one that is making. Is the one that will make you. And it will make you not what you have been. It will make you cross the line and jump the hurdle. You have now become a conqueror in Jesus' name. And he made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles among the people. The Lord made, that's the word, made, the Lord made me have Dominion over the mighty. Your time has now come. Number five, making the foolish wise. Making the foolish wise. You see, I don't have wisdom. I don't know how to take good decisions. I can make mistakes. Anybody can make mistakes. But the Lord will be with you. And Christ is your wisdom. And then he said, I will give you a mouth that you'll be wiser than all your enemies in Jesus' name. And then the word of God has been given to us so that that word will make you wise. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15, it says, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make, make, make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Not only that, he makes the rough smooth. Can this ever be a minister, a good professional? Can this ever be a manager? Can this ever be a director? He is rough. He'll make the rough smooth. Look at Luke chapter 3 verse 5. It says, Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough Ways shall be made smooth. Every rough corner in your life, it will chisel away. Everything that will discredit your ministry, discredit your progress, and discredit your effectiveness, everything, the chisel of the Lord will chisel everything away in Jesus' name. He'll make the rough smooth. And then number seven, he makes the ordinary distinct, extraordinary. You feel ordinary. You think ordinary. And you feel that your strength, your life, Everything about you is ordinary. An extraordinary level is now come. And the Lord will lift you up to that extraordinary level. And you will do exploits for the Lord in Jesus' name. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, reading from verse 7. For who maketh thee, maketh thee, maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou 
that thou didst not thou didst not receive. Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? The same grace of God that made Paul the apostle different, that made Apollos different, that made Timothy different, distinguished different, the Lord will accomplish in your life. Number eight is making the unknown great. He's the one that will do it. You say, I am a nobody. You are somebody now. You say, I am not known. The Lord will lift you up. And it will take you places in the world you have never thought about in Jesus' name. Because he is the one that makes the unknown a great. Second Samuel chapter 22, I will read him from verse 36. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation. Thy gentleness has made, that's the word made, has made me great. The goodness of the Lord will make you great. The grace of the Lord will make you great. The anointing, special anointing, specific anointing uh, will make you great. In verse 37, it says in verse 37, Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, so that... My feet did not sleep. Enlargement will come to you. Increase will come to you. And remember, it's not you. It's him. He made them. He has come to make you. Number nine is the one that makes the unfruitful fruitful. The people that didn't have, they didn't know they'll produce fruit. The fruit of the Spirit, the love, the joy, the peace, the gentleness, and the goodness and the faith and the temperance is the one that produces the fruit in our lives. And the fruit of the ministry is the one that will bring up that fruit in your life. In John chapter 15, verse 16, it says, Ye. Have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. I am chosen. I am chosen. If you believe that from the depth of your heart, say it aloud, I am chosen. And then he said, I have ordained you. I am ordained. I am ordained. Why? That he should go and bring forth fruit. Brother, you'll bear fruit. Sister, you'll bear fruit. That work of your hand that the Lord has ordained in that place he has placed you, it will bear fruit in Jesus' name. It says that he should go forth and bear fruit, and that your fruit shall remain. Your fruit will abide. And that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name that he may give it you. He will answer your prayer. And then, number 10, making the meek mighty. Making the meek mighty. He'll make you mighty and no power will be stronger than you are in Jesus' name. Then number 11, he makes the cult unconquerable. He has called you. And because he has called you, he makes you unconquerable. Number 12, making his ministers a flame of fire. He didn't say amen to that one. A flame of fire. Have you thought about what fire does? If you have been in the farm, you understand? When you make the fire, 
all the all the serpents, snakes, and all the rabbits, whatever that have been hiding there, you find them running out. And anywhere you go, as a flame of fire, all those personalities, all those evil things, they be run. Even before you mention the name of Jesus, your presence there, and the fire, the flame of fire in your life that you carry will be sending all those things away from that place in Jesus name Amen. and look at Psalm 104 reading from verse 4 Psalm 104 reading from verse 4 it says who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flaming fire his ministers a flaming fire any flame of fire here today? Where are you? That fire will burn. Like it burns in the life and the mystery of John the Baptist. That fire in your life will burn in Jesus' name. He'll be a wall of fire around you. No evil will come near you. And no evil power will be able to overcome you in Jesus' name. Flame of fire. Hebrews chapter 1, reading from verse 7. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 7. And of the angels, it says, who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. As you go to minister, understand, even if you don't feel anything, the enemy will see that fire. And before you get there, they'll clear out of your way. All those magicians, they'll clear out of your way. All those Canaanites, they'll clear out of your way. They'll make you a permanent flame of fire in Jesus' name. We come to point number three now. Point number three is we have the marks of divinely appreciated ministers. As we, have, as we have come to this conference, and now we are, after the conference, we go back to ministry. What marks should I look for in my life? What marks should you look for in your life? Let, let's open our Bible to second. Timothy chapter 2. And let's go from verse 1 and see the marks is expecting. Number 1, dependence on God's all-sufficient grace. Look at this in verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. That's the mark. I'm not depending on my own strength. When I say I cannot go there because I'm not a match for that place, I'm depending on my own strength. When I depend on the grace of God, I know anywhere the plan of God sends me, there is enough grace to fulfill all he has called me to fulfill. Dependence on God's all sufficient grace. Number two, reproducing like minded preachers. That's the mark of a person who is approved, appointed, appreciated, anointed by God. He is reproducing like minded preachers, like minded workers, like minded leaders. He says in verse two, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same permit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. When you pass everything you have, all the skill you have, all the understanding you have, all the vision you have, all the revelation you have, all the ability you have, all the enablement you have, you pass it on to the next generation. And you have definite impact on the people you are leading and they're able to do what you're doing. And you're able to sit back and see them succeed that the mark 
of divinely appreciated ministers. Number three is freedom from entanglements. Freedom from entanglements. It tells us in verse 4, it says, No man that worried entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him that has chosen him to be a soldier. That is the mark you have. If you're a teacher, another person is a doctor, you are not straying and meddling with the work of the doctor. That would be an entanglement. If you're an engineer, another person is a sailor. You are not a mendling with the affairs of the sailor. If you are a minister in a particular capacity, you are not meddling with what others are doing. You know your calling, and you know your gift, and you know your appointment, and you know what God himself has placed you on earth to do. There will be no encumbrance and there will be no entanglement. Now, if you're not even going to be entangled with good, good things, how about things that are bad, traditional things, occultic things, and the tribal things that are not of God, a man that is called of God, a woman that is called of God, the mark that the Lord appreciates his ministry, her ministry, you will not be entangled with the affairs of this life so that you will please him who has chosen you to be a soldier. Freedom from entanglements. Number four, always aiming at mastery in ministry. Always aiming at at mastery. That's the mark. But the one who says, it's not very important. This will not give me a great marriage. This will not be recognized too much by others around. And so I can do this one in a shoddy way. I don't have to prepare. I don't have to be my best in this occasion now. That's not the mark of a person appreciated by the Lord. The mark of a divinely appreciated minister is that he is always aiming at mastery in ministry. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, and if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. Number 5, possession of gospel fruits. The gospel bears fruit. The fruit of a new life and the fruit of a righteous life, the fruit of a holy life, the fruit of a powerful, irresistible life. The gospel bears fruit. And if you're a carrier of the gospel, a preacher of the gospel, the mark that you are appointed, you are approved, and you are appreciated by God who has called you is that you possess the gospel fruits. It tells us in verse 6, it says, the husband man that laboreth, that laboreth, it's not, it doesn't just labor one week out of 52 weeks of the year. It's laboring, it's planting, it's preaching, it's strengthening, it's edifying the church. It's always looking for something to do and to do the work creditably approved of God. The husband man that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Are you teaching people patience? Manifest it yourself. Are you teaching people holiness? Manifest it yourself. Are you teaching people a righteous walk, a righteous life in the private, in the public? Manifest it yourself. Are you teaching people to abstain from all appearance of evil? 
manifest it yourself you must bear that fruit and then number six is the willingness to suffer for others salvation look at verse nine the willingness to suffer for others salvation it tells us in verse nine Wherein I suffer trouble as an evil doer. You know, some people cannot bear telling lies on them. He told lies on me. With all I do, I was the way I minister. Look at the big lie they formulated and then placed squarely on my shoulders. Paul the apostle said, I've been doing that too. They've been doing that to me. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. But the word of God is not bound. And then he tells us in verse 10, it says, Therefore I endure all things, all things for the elect's sake, that they also may obtain salvation which is in christ jesus with eternal glory it says i suffer for a purpose i endure for a purpose all the people i get to all the people i go to small or great men or women i do that so that they can obtain salvation which is in christ jesus with eternal life and if the, that's the mark the mark of a real minister that I know that suffering, I know that's pressure, I know that's opposition, I know that's uh, not right, I know that's against me, but all the same, I'm going to go through it, I'm going to endure so that I bring the word of salvation and the experience of salvation to the people who are not saved. God give you more grace. I said the Lord give you more grace. Number 10, number 7 is deadness, deadness to the attractions and the affections of the world. It says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 11, it says, It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. You are dead to the comments of the world. You are dead to the criticisms of the world. The Lord has appointed you. And he says that is what you do. And that is where to go. Whatever the afflictions and whatever the affections coming from the world. The Lord will make you dead to them in Jesus name. Number eight is seeking only God's approval. Seeking only God's approval. Seeking only, only, only God's approval. That's in verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. You know what that means? When you divide the word of truth. You divide it rightly in the presence of God. What will that person think because he's coming from that other side? What will that person think of this, my preaching, because he's coming from that other side? That's not your business. You're to preach the word of God. You're not to preach a denominational doctrine. You're to preach the word of God. Study to show yourself approved unto God, not unto a board, unto God, not unto a panel, approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly, properly, scripturally, dividing the word of truth. The Lord make his grace to abound and increase in your life in Jesus' name. And then, uh, in number 10, uh, sorry, number 9, is abundant, uh, avoidance 
of fruitless engagements. Fruitless engagements. Engagements are many. Invitations are many. Discussions are many. Questions are many. You avoid whatever will not bear fruit. Whatever will generate only argument, only fighting, only denominational comparison, I about this, I about that. You see, God has not called me for that. Take care of that. And then you move on into accredited ministry by the Lord in Jesus' name. And then uh, number 10 uh, is preserving uh, the truth that builds faith preserving the truth of the word that builds faith faith coming by hearing hearing by the word of god and that is what you want to preserve number 11 is total sorrow departure from all iniquity total sorrow departure from all iniquity. Verse 19, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having they seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone, 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 let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Iniquity will not have any hold in your life anymore in Jesus' name. Verse 21. In verse 21, it tells us if a man, if a woman, if a minister, if a professional, if anyone that calls the name of Christ, therefore, purge himself, purge herself from this, it shall be a vessel unto honor. Vessels unto honor. Are you here today? Vessels unto honor. The Lord will honor you. Heaven will honor you. Ministry will honor you. And the thing you're doing for the glory of God will honor you. This honor will pass out of your life. Honor. 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 It'll honor you with power. Honor you with anointing. Honor you with miracle. Honor you with a successful ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. Number 12, you are gentle and meek in recovering the captives. You're not, you know, going around and, uh, you know, pushing people, driving people, making them this and making them that. The Lord himself will honor you with that character of gentleness in Jesus' name. But your gentleness will not be a disadvantage. You'll be gentle, you'll move on. You'll be gentle, you'll go forward. You'll be gentle, and the Lord will magnify himself in your life in Jesus' name. I pray the God of heaven, the God that has called you, and the God who has appointed you from this day will lay an honor upon your life that people that see you, they'll say, that's an honorable man. That's an honorable woman. And then the way will clear before you as the clear for honorable people in Jesus' name. Where are you, man of honor? Where are you, woman of honor? Why don't you rise up and say, Lord, here am I. Make me what I ought to be. Make me what I ought to be. It's the one that makes. It's the one that makes. And the Lord is going to make you. He will make you. He will make you. He will make you all that you ought to be. You'll climb higher. You'll go higher than you have ever been. And the Lord will approve of your service, of your ministry. And the great thing he tends in your life, in your family, and in your ministry, the Lord will accomplish even from today. Man of honor, tell the Lord, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's not by marriage. It's by mercy. It's by grace. And it is coming to everyone. The favor of God will be upon your life. And you will climb higher. And you'll do greater. And you'll go places you've never gone. And you'll achieve what you have never achieved. The Lord 
is rising up to do it in your life even now. Look at the model. It says before us the model of a teacher. You study, you learn, you know, and then you're able to communicate what the Lord has done in your life. You're diligent about it. You study your Bible. It's not just having quiet time, devotional time, that's good, but you go deeper, you go higher, so that you will benefit our generation with the teaching of the Word of God, and the anointing of a teacher will be upon your life, and then you will be a soldier of Jesus Christ. No fear, no timidity, no cringing, no shaking, no trembling, and the Lord will remove the straw that you have for backbone, and he'll put his spiritual strength even there. And then, like an athlete, you're running, you're not carrying weights, you don't allow encumbrances, you don't allow entanglements, and then you're moving on, moving on, moving on. Practicing, running, disciplined, temperate in all things. And like a farmer, dedicated, you'll be a, perf a performer. You run, not be weary. Tell him he'll make you, make you a saint, make you a soul winner, make you a strong one. Make you salt in the earth. Make you a steward. A steward of the mysteries of God. Make you a servant, a servant of God that will not be ashamed any day and will not be ashamed in eternity. Make you, he'll make you strong, mighty, effective, powerful, irresistible, successful in the ministry as a conqueror. And the marks will be in your life. The marks of dependence upon God. The marks of reproducing others. And the marks of freedom, total freedom from every entanglement. And anything that will be an encumbrance, entanglement in your life that will hinder or slow down your move, your progress in ministry, all that you reject. Make you a possessor of the gospel fruits, the fruit of the Spirit, the love without hatred, the peace of mind, joy, goodness, that the good Samaritan. You bear the fruit. 
You'll be willing to endure, willing to suffer for others' salvation. You go to the villages. You go to the communities. You go where they eat different food like than you eat. You will go everywhere even though there is discomfort that's the mark of an appreciated minister willingness to suffer for other salvation you'll be dead to the attractions of the world dead to the affections of the world you're seeking only the approval of God in everything you do, everywhere you go, and the content of what you preach, the seeking only the approval of God, and you avoid fruitless engagements, fruitless conversation. You preserve. The truth that builds faith. You are totally, thoroughly departing from evil. Any evil, appearance of evil, departing from them. Called, anointed, empowered. Successful and honored by God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. From today, the Lord will honor you. Amen. On the field, the Lord will honor you. Amen. In your ministry, the Lord will honor you. Amen. In your family, the Lord will honor your family. Amen. The Lord has brought you to himself and is sending you forth. That you will bear fruit. Amen. And your fruit will remain. Amen. And the Lord will honor you anytime you pray. Amen. That whatsoever you ask the Lord, the Lord will do it. Amen. The honored brother, honored minister, where is he there? Honored sister, honored minister, where are you there? Accept it, it is now. Amen. Father, we thank you today. We bless your name because you have reminded us that if anyone is successful, if anyone is unconquerable, if anyone is fruitful, if anyone is mighty and powerful, you are the one that made him, you are the one that made her. I bring your ministers before you. I bring everyone, professionals, before you. I bring every brother, every sister before you. Lord, I pray you bring the honor of heaven upon their lives in Jesus' name authority in their mouth anointing in their ministry i pray everything shakeable will be shaken out of their lives out of their ministries in jesus name lord i pray all the diligence we need to teach your word and i pray all the dedication we need to produce fruit and to feed our people give to everyone and I pray those who are tired already, wake them up. Amen. A new start. Amen. A new day. Amen. A new journey. Amen. A new level of ministration in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray those who have been defeated before, I pray, wipe away the remembrance of their fall. Amen. And the remembrance of their defeat. Amen. 
And I pray that new energy, a new approval, a new anointing that breaks every yoke will come upon their lives. Those who are weak, make them strong. Those who are sick, make them whole. And those who are bound, set them free. And I pray that every entanglement, every encumbrance will get out of their lives. Rise up, rise up, rise up in the strength of the Lord. Look at the journey before you. The Lord go with you. The Lord abide with you. His strength abide with you. And everything that is called failure is cancelled out of your life. Ah. 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 Father. Greater. Higher. The Lord take you in Jesus' name. As the Lord honors you, the earth will hear your testimony. Heaven will record your success. Inside you, the greater one that never lost any battle will abide with you. No more failure. No more tears. No more sorrow. No more sickness. No more weakness. No more poverty. The provision of heaven upon your life. Father, confirm everything for everyone in Jesus' name. It is done. It is done. I receive. I receive confirmation in your life. It is done.